Lighting is one of the most important parts of composing a good scene. A fantastic model can look terrible with bad lighting. Brother, ugh. what's that? So in this video, I'm gonna give you five simple tricks that'll help you step up your lighting game. And hopefully by the end of it, you can go out there and show your models in their best light. The first tip here is that you shouldn't waste 20 minutes positioning dozens of lights and then pointing them one at a time at your subject. Instead, grab every single light in your scene you want to aim at your subject and use Shift T. And what's gonna happen there is every single light is gonna start tracking your cursor. And then you can basically put your cursor on whatever it is that you're trying to aim the lights at and click and it will confirm the position and now all of your lights are aimed in one shot. No, get those lights off! Second tip I've got here is you need to set your light values to real life values and then set exposure. What do I mean by this? Well, especially in cycles, you should configure your lights using real world brightness. That doesn't mean to set every single light as if it's an indoor light bulb that's like 60 watts. It just means, you know, no more 400,000 watt lamps, unless you're maybe making modern car headlights. Oh my God! Instead, Look at real life similar lights and set them up to match closely. So like, look at the light values of actual studio lights if you're doing a studio scene, or if you're doing interior scenes, look at the actual light values of like the lamps and the light bulbs that you have in your scene. And then your scene is gonna be really freaking dark. So what do you do? Do you go boost those all by an equivalent amount? No, what you actually wanna do is stop the exposure up in your scene. Uh, so basically there's two places that you can set exposure in cycles, the film tab and color settings. I'm going to not completely cover why these two are different, but I would suggest using the color settings and then maybe I'll cover it in a later video. Um, basically, yeah, go in the color tabs, boost your exposure up until it looks basically how you want it, and then you can make finite adjustments to the light brightness as needed. But do away with those 6,000, 5,000, 10,000 watt lights because not only is it unrealistic, it's actually adding noise in your scene as well. Third tip I've got for you guys, and this is my first sort of real big boy tip, is to use light groups. Light groups are one of the coolest and most powerful features in cycles, and almost nobody seems to use them for some reason. I definitely see them getting used by, you know, post pros, but I've noticed hobbyists tend to basically ignore the feature if they even know it exists. So, you know, if you want to leg up on other people, or if you're, you know, just starting out with studio work, definitely learn how to use these. They're freaking awesome. They do amazing stuff, um, and they can save you a ton of time in rendering if you know how to use them. So basically, when you assign lights to a light group, they're output as an additional pass in your view layer, and you can export that to a separate file or to a separate layer in an EXR file if you're using that format, and you can do some really incredible stuff with that information. Here's an example of me changing a scene from day to night entirely in post with no re-rendering. So imagine this is an animation, how much time cost you would have re-rendering an entire scene day for night or changing the color of one of your lamps in a scene. And if you're working and you're doing this professionally, that's hundreds or thousands of dollars in render street credits or render farm credits or just lost time on a job that you could save by setting up your scene correctly so that if your client request changes, you can nail those changes in without having to re-render anything. Definitely learn this one. In fact, I'm so passionate about light groups and I, I think they're so underused that I really would like to make an individual video about that. So maybe keep an eye out for that or let me know in the comments if you think that's worth doing. Number four, fake IES lights. Do you know what an IES light is? If you don't, an IES light, IES stands for Illuminated Engineering Society. Ooh, fancy. But it's actually just a file format, basically, that's used to describe the beam pattern of various different professional lights. And the reason that it's useful is if you're in ArcViz or some other similar field where you're making stuff that has like real actual lights in it, uh, you can take an IES file and attach it to one of your digital lights and it'll basically, the beam pattern of your light will end up looking how the real life light would look. Now, that's great. And you can actually use IES light files in Blender, and I'll even link a website that has some in the description here. But sometimes you just need that, you know, aesthetically pleasing beam pattern from a light, and it doesn't actually have to match perfectly to a real life light. And it's especially common that you might need that from a mesh light, which you just can't do because mesh lights are just an emissive surface. But you actually can. And uh, basically, uh, there's a node set up here, and I'm going to show this on screen right now, and it'll basically just take the back face off of your mesh so that you're not shining light out of both sides of your mesh light emitter, and it's going to take that, and it's going to make a circular projection, and it's going to map a color ramp to it, 
And then the black values on the color ramp will effectively disable lights in that section, and the light values will effectively enable lights on that section. And you can even do stuff like adding multiple colors to the ramp to change tints between the different parts of the beam. And you can get really nice, aesthetically pleasing, and, and very cool looking beam patterns from this. The only caveat is that this only works in cycles since it's, it's relying on the ray tracer and EV doesn't have a full ray tracer currently. Maybe this will change in 4.2, I actually haven't tested it yet, but as of now it's cycles only. The last lighting tip I'm gonna give you is to use light textures and animated light textures to get more interesting lighting and even fake caustics. Did you know that you can use textures on your lights in cycles? Check out how much more dynamic I made this render of a car by adding this free video of some water to my light as a texture. To do this, you just need to go check use nodes in the light's material settings and give it this node setup. And basically what that's gonna do is it's going to use the normal of the light as a texture coordinate, and then you're gonna pass that through a mapping node so that you can control the projection of your texture, make it bigger, smaller, transform it, stretch it, whatever, and then give it a texture. And what it's gonna do is it's basically going to treat that light like a studio projector. And basically, the controls that you're gonna have over this besides what's in the shading group is the same as you would with a regular light, except in this case, the size of the light rather than affecting the sharpness of the shadow will affect the sharpness of the image. It'll also affect shadow sharpness, but it will affect image sharpness first and foremost. And then the other thing is blending mode. With a, with a spotlight, the blend will basically work the same way as it would with a pure light, except that in this case, it's an image that you're blending. And so you'll get softened edges around the edge of the image. This is tremendously effective for adding a ton of detail and realism in the lighting to very simple scenes without having to construct big elaborate out you know outer lighting boxes or shining lights through cut out geometry to fake dappled lighting and whatnot because you can basically just go get a video of dappled lighting blur it a little bit by tweaking your light size and project it directly onto your scene so yeah that's it for this one subscribe so you don't miss anything and uh, see you on the next one remember